hello again again if you just watched the intro if you didn't then hello generally um welcome to the first episode i guess of uh, what katie saw i would like to talk to you this evening um about the kid who would be king so this is a new family film and it is written and directed by Joe Cornish. Um, I realise when it comes to films and stuff, some people watching will know exactly who that is. Some people won't have a clue. So for those not in the know, Joe Cornish is a, a British writer, director, actor, comedian. Um, you might have heard of the Adam and Joe show back in the day. And that is him and Adam Buxton. They still tend to do some stuff together. Uh, the last film that Joe wrote and directed was um, Attack the Block from a couple of years ago. And I'll mention a bit more about that in a minute. But this one is a PG-rated family film based on Arthurian legend or the legend of King Arthur. Now, if you know nothing about the legend of King Arthur, that's fine. There's a lovely little catchy up previously on Arthurian legend at the beginning of the film. So it kind of brings you up to speed, Excalibur... Arthur, Sword in the Stone, all that jazz. You might have seen the Disney film when you were a kid, you might not. Um, so it stars um, a young gentleman called Lewis Ashbourne Circus, um, and he is the son of the very famous Andy Circus, who obviously was Gollum and King Kong and um, has probably spent more of his life in a motion capture suit than not in it in the last sort of 20 years. Um, Lewis, or it could be Louis, because it's spelled L-O-U-I-S, so I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, I'm going to go with Lewis. Um, so he plays a young lad called Alex, or Alexander Elliot, to give him his full name, and um, he's at school, life is what it is, him and his friend Bedders are being bullied by um, two bigger kids in their school, everything's a bit grim and grey, and then one night, uh, while running away from said bullies, Young Alexander finds himself on a sort of derelict building site, a housing complex that's not been finished. And he finds a sword in a stone. And guess what? He pulls it out. And from there, it all kicks off. Um, he decides, he realises, yeah, okay, I'm, I'm the heir of um, Arthur. I am the once and future king, the rightful king. Um, he meets Merlin. Um, Merlin is played by um, an actor called Angus Imrie, who is the son of the actress Celia Imrie. So you've got two leads in this film who have um, a famous parent. It's definitely worth mentioning that they are both great in their roles and I don't think nepotism got them their part. I'm sure they worked very hard for them. They're both worthy of them. So he plays the sort of younger incarnation of Merlin and does a great sort of fish out of water thing. Um, he's very sort of traditional and, you know, as you'd expect, but in, in modern dress and very much sticks out like a sore thumb in like a, a London comprehensive school. He shapeshifts, I guess you could call it. So sometimes he's, he's young Merlin, sometimes he's an owl. Um, sometimes he's Patrick Stewart, you know, like you do. We all, we can all relate. Sometimes I'm an owl, sometimes I'm Patrick Stewart. Patrick Stewart gets to do a wonderful, um, bordering on hammy, mad head, crazy old man performance of Merlin. Um, and to say any more, I guess, would be to give too much away. Um, if you're asking if I enjoyed it, I did very much. I think it could have done with being a little bit shorter. It's two hours, and as a mother of two, my children are ten and six. I know they get the Wrigley McFidgets if I ask them to sit still for too long. So there was I would have trimmed it down a little bit. Um, however, I did thoroughly enjoy it. What I will say is I would take my ten-year-old to see this. My daughter is ten. I would not take my six-year-old son to see this. It is in places genuinely scary, and I think that's great. Um, because I'm all for scary stuff, but they're fighting against. I've totally gone blank as to what they're called, but they're basically sort of dead soldiers, dead warriors, fallen in battle of old, but like coming up and fighting for the dark side for uh, Morgana, who's the villain of the piece. Um, they're really quite scary. So imagine somewhere around, if you think like ring wraiths from um Lord of the Rings. 
but with fire, sort of bony skeletal horses with the skeletal men with flaming swords and yeah they're quite scary and I'm not entirely sure how my littlest one would cope with that. Now if you're watching this as a parent you know your kid and if your four-year-old is nails and is phased by nothing I wouldn't take a four-year-old actually I'd say six up I don't think I would take my son to the cinema because he might wig and then we'd have to leave so I think I would leave it until um, the DVD or Blu-ray release but if you're looking for something to go and see this half term I would definitely um, recommend this it's good fun it's a great adventure um, it has some quite raw moments um, there's stuff to do with Alex's dad and again I don't want to give anything away um, but there's a bit you know, he's been raised by his mum and there's a bit that touches on actually how bloody hard it is to be a parent sometimes. And as one, I'm like that in the cinema. Yes, amen. Um, but really, it's about friendship and doing the right thing and good versus evil. And it's got some, some really good laughs in it. It looks great. It's shot, you know, the shot around Stonehenge. Um, they go down sort of Cornwall way. Um, so it's got some really lovely, pretty rolling hills of England um, stuff going on and uh, yeah it was a really really good fun adventure film and um, like I say if you've got sensitive little ones I would give it a miss in the cinema but definitely try and catch it when it comes out to watch at home and um, so that's The Kid Who Would Be King written and directed as I said by Joe Cornish the very talented Joe Cornish as the cast is quite young I think it's interesting to look back at Attack the Block that he did um, a few years back now. Um, I happened to catch a bit of it on Sky Movies the other night and it stars John Boyega and um, Jodie Whittaker, among others. Um, now, I know Jodie Whittaker had been in other bits and bobs, but it made me smile to look back on Attack the Block and go, oh, look, within this lovely British alien invasion sci-fi film, you've got somebody who went on to be in Star Wars and someone who now plays the Doctor. And not only that, but the first ever female Doctor Who we've ever had. So it'll be definitely worth watching where the young cast of the kid who would be king end up sort of five or ten years from now. Um, they were all really good in their part. So, yeah. Before I finish, because I'm conscious of these videos not being too long, so you don't get bored. As we're talking um, Arthurian legend, I just wanted to throw another recommendation out there. Um, best not to lean out of shot, Katie. I was just fidgeting. Um, there was a film out in 1998. Ah, the past. I don't even want to think about how long ago that actually was. And it is called The Mighty. And it's based on a book called Freak the Mighty. And it was this lovely, quirky little film that I happened to see because, as I said, I'm quite into my films. And it was on at the Town Set Cinema in Newcastle. And I dragged my friends, Erin and Lynn, to see it with me. And boy, oh boy, did we do all the crying. It is a bit of a tearjerker. The reason I'm mentioning it is it also is built around Arthurian legend. Um, it stars Sharon Stone. Gillian Anderson's in it. Uh, it also has Kieran Culkin and Eldon Henson, who, if you're into your Marvel Netflix TV vibes, you will know as Foggy from the Daredevil stuff. Um, or if you're a lover of the past, you might also recognise him from The Mighty Ducks. But it is a film about a boy with a progressive degenerative condition. Um, and then another boy who is sort of a big lump of a lad who neither has got really friends and they find friendship with each other and they slay dragons in their own special way. Um, and that is again tied to um, Arthurian legend. And it's just, nobody really seems to know about it. It's a lovely, quirky, incredibly sad in places film. I can't remember the certificate on it. I remember starting to watch it with Eva, who, as I said, is 10. I think I tried to show it to her last year and then I bailed out of it because I remembered where the ending went and I was like, yeah, I'm not prepared to do this to her. But as an adult, adult to adult, if you like that sort of thing um, and you want to see something a little bit different, Lord knows where you find it. I've got it on DVD, but look out um, The Mighty, as I say, Sharon Stone, Kieran Culkin and Eldon Henson. We're coming up on the 10 minute mark, guys, so I am going to say goodbye for now. That was um, what Katie saw, talking about the kid who would be king. And I will be back, hopefully tomorrow, I'm going to audience screen unseen. So I have no clue what I'm going to watch tomorrow, but I will be back to tell you if I liked it or not. Uh, thank you for watching if you did, and I'll catch you all soon. Bye-bye.